We are authenticated luxury consignment. We do take possession of every good before we sell it, which means we can describe it and make sure it's real. And we have 30 experts on site to look at items, whether they're gemologists or watch experts or art curators. Sellers get a commission. How does that work exactly? The more you sell with us, the more you make. So we start you at 55 points. Once you sell more in the course of a year, you can get up to 70%. So that sounds like that's one way you're able to differentiate yourself, but it is a very competitive marketplace. There's so many different startups that are doing consignment. How do you stand out? One, we do focus on pre-owned luxury goods, so it is the focus of the business. And then we do all the work for you. And some of the challenges that some of the startups have faced is balancing supply and demand. We saw Threadflip shut down partly because of that. How do you guys balance that and figure that all out? Since the beginning, we've been supply limited. So right now we still have a lot more demand than we have supply. And our goal in um, getting that supply is to make it so easy that it becomes an effortless way to do it. And you've raised, it's approaching 200 million in venture and private equity funding. How are you convincing these investors? What kind of metrics are you able to show them about your growth? I have raised a lot of capital. And when you start thinking about what enables you to keep raising, it's improving unit economics along with high growth, um, along with great cohorts. And all those things are working for us. You're going to have your first store in a few months. You're announcing that it's going to be in New York. Uh, why, are you, why are you opening physical stores? We are going to open our first store, and that's because we had a phenomenally successful pop-up. So the combination of it's a branding exercise, although we sold a lot in uh, the 18 days we were open, the branding exercise was great, the consumer experience was great, and we could bring our experts forward. So these are two bags from the Tuileries collection from Louis Vuitton. Um, and they're both really detailed with multicolor trim, um, you know, the super famous monogram pattern. And the satchel version is actually the counterfeit. If you feel the hardware, the zippers are really lightweight as compared to this one. Uh, the color, the tonation, this is a bit more brown. This, the monogram is a bit more red. And if you look at the inside and even the logo on the outside, the printing is really large. You can see that there, where it should be much more subtle. Every Louis Vuitton bag is also going to have a date code. And if we look at this here, to decode it, it would say that it was made in the year 38. So it's either extremely vintage <laughs> or it's from the future. So whereas this one reads that it's from 2016, which is when this line came out. Could you be a public company someday? Are we going to see you traded on the, the New York Stock Exchange or the NASDAQ? It's not a brand that could be subsumed or should be. It's a company that should keep going and growing, and that's the goal. We really aren't in the mood to sell the business. We're in the mood to uh, go public some point in the future. <laughs> <laughs>